Hello everyone, welcome. Welcome to Majesty's Sussex Report. I'm Antonio, and as always, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so very much for the gift of your time and for spending it here with us. As you may see, for those who are subscribers, our intro is a little bit different. So I end the set. I, I finished this design today. I hope you like it. And I, every season, I usually will move things around in my home just to get the, the flow of the air or, or, or the whatever, the chi or the chai or whatever it's called, just, just to get it moving, right? Uh, so I intend to do the same thing with, um, the, uh, with, with the channel. So maybe not every season, but ever so often I'll just sort of, change things around so it has a another look or whatever and i hope you folks are okay with that i didn't change the music of the intro because um i love that that <laughs> that tune and a lot of you also have said that you you really like it so it's staying um it's an interesting show we have today i am going to be trying out a couple of things um in 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 this i will say summer season uh, just because I get very, as I said, I, it sounds like I get I get very bored. But I I like to change things a little bit once in a while. Uh, if I have some new ideas, I want to try them out. And I'm a big believer in trying whatever you need to try out. And if you fail, that's okay. At least you have an answer. And I know how you folks are. Uh, if it's something you want to support and you like, I know you will support it and, and, and you will like it. And if it's something you're like, I don't know why he's doing that, <laughs> then you will not support it, right? So I know that. So it's 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 sort of prime way to test something because then I know if you folks are not supporting it or if you don't like it, you will, you will let me know one way or another. So thank you. And um don't worry, I'm not going to all of a sudden show up and, you know, <laughs> be something that I'm not. Everything that I that I do, I do it for my authentic self. And it's something that I either I want to do or curious or I want to try. So I, I don't force things on myself that are not um, of my wanting or, or anything like that. So you'll see some stuff and we'll see how it's, how it's received. That's it for the intro. Oh, 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 I have to say, you know, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. If you are, do um, turn on your notification. Of course, we like likes. So like um, this episode, um, we appreciate it. All of this stuff, leaving a comment, liking, subscribing, sharing, it all helps the channel to not be buried at the very bottom of something and um, never to be discovered. I would love for other people who are like-minded like um, discovers the channel so the channel has a consistent um, growth. I mean, I'm okay where, where we are, I really am. Um, I'm also okay with um, growing, we all, want to know that whatever we're doing is making a, a difference or an impact and that we are advancing and that is measured here by how many people subscribe how many people are members and so on as far as for me i enjoy having this opportunity to talk to you folks and 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 tell, tell, tell you what i think um and you've been just absolutely God sent, right? You've been really kind and and marvelous. So, all right, before I take up more time, because today is going to be, I have quite a lot to talk about, actually. So, let's get it on. And this headline comes from... Um, AS TV or AS um, out of Spain and it reads um, who is Sarah Tyndall Prince William's great support system throughout Kate Middleton's illness 
Okay, and um, I'll just read here for you folks quickly some of the content. So it says here, Prince William of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth is facing a challenging period with health issues adding to the strain during a time of economic and social unrest. Despite these difficulties, the British heir is steadfast in his responsibilities, stepping up, the, stepping up to the representation task, particularly now that his brother, Prince Henry, is no longer part of the crown following King Charles III's as a announcement of their father's cancer. Okay, that didn't make much sense. Anyways, um, as heir to the throne, William is next in line to replace his father. King Charles, in addition to the work he must assume as Prince of Wales. As a son, he feels anxiety about his father's future, a feeling that does not find relief at home, where the situation is even worse, since his wife, Catherine Middleton, um, with whom he has three children, is also sick with cancer. Uh, let say some other stuff there. Then it, um, it just says, Sarah Tyndall, the daughter of Mark Philip and Prince, Princess Anne, shares a unique bond with Prince William. Mm -mm. Their close relationship, akin to that of Prince Henry and the daughters of the Duke of York, is further strengthened by Tyndall's deep understanding of the heir's household, thanks to her close relationship with the Princess of Wales. Okay. And then it just goes on to say that, you know, they each have three, three children and... She, how, uh, oh, oh, this is, this is precious. Um, like Kate Middleton, Tyndall has three children that she shares with Mike Tyndall, a retired and beloved rugby player. However, something distinguishes Tyndall from the rest of her cousins. She does not have this status or status of a princess. Her mother decided to raise her and her brother with a very ordinary life, away from the monarchy's grandeur and the press scrutiny. All right, so that's a little... It was written by Marta Rodriguez Peletero. That's a little bit of a promo. Um, I mean, did they just say, hey, can you can you write this, um, or can you put your name on it? Like, I'm, I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just saying... It just seems like like a weird piece of um, propaganda, really. And, it, I mean, n number one, let's, let's, let's do this. Num num number one, if he is having so many difficulties or hardship because he has to do all this stuff, I would like to see his schedule. I'd like to know what is it exactly that he's doing, because as far as I remember, I think their household has, what, 60 employees or something like that, that is at his beck and order. And um, as far as I'm concerned, he had said that he was going to be by the bedside of his wife taking care of her. We've seen William out in garden parties and, you know... Um, living it up over here, having some drinks, going over there to a football game. The guy, and look, I don't, I'm not saying not to have a regular, ordinary life. Go ahead and do your stuff. But this whole narrative about feel sorry for William is getting kind of pathetic and kind of sad, right? Because also, like, he hardly works. He does nothing. I think if he does, like, a quarter of what, Prince Harry does, and, and this is Prince Harry's own own thing. I understand that, right? But the, the, if if these royal reporters, royal Rada and all these these stupid people, you know, with 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 lack of any sense or brain, did their job the way they're supposed to do it, right? They would be applying pressure where pressure should be a, a, applied. But but they but they but they're all sleeping in the same waterbed 
right? That's what they're, they're all in it together and they don't know how to get off of it. I think that's part of the problem, right? So they're all in it and they just kind of sink in together in this water bed that just goes plopply, 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 plopply. because one scratches one's, you know, I was going to say something really rude. Um, I'll keep it PG-13. Scratches one put one back, the other one, I don't know, pulls the other one's finger, the other one puts the finger in their ear, the other one put the finger in their nose, and next thing you know, you know, they're in the water bed together. So, good luck to all of them. I don't know why they just can't keep Harry and Meghan out of their freaking mouth and stuff every second, even in this freaking art, art article, you know. Had to bring up Prince Prince Henry. Prince Henry is no longer with the crown, so poor William. Oh, get over yourselves. You know, sometimes I see things that are so stupid that I think I'm not going to even, you know, bring it and 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 discuss it or or give it any more air or anything like that. But there are times when it's beyond stupid like like when 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 it's when it's gone it's dug a hole it found stupid and then it continued going beyond stupid so this this treasure of a person um decided to compare the the letter that um princess megan the duchess of sussex sent to one of the um kings of nigeria and a, a letter that um, Catherine wrote to a person she met in a hospital, I guess on a visit or something to that sort. And her whole thing was about the way the signatures are, right? That Catherine um, has, what did she say? Um, it's fascinating to observe how different people handle their correspondence, especially when it comes to royals. Or in any case, if a, a form or a former royal. Take Kate, for instance. She signs her letters simply as Catherine. No fanfare, no titles, just her name. Her confidence and grace speaks of volumes. And she has no need to overcompensate for anything. Then there is <laughs> Megan. I'm just picturing that that's probably her inner child. That's the way her inner child speaks. Let me just say to this person or to anyone who has gone beyond stupid, because I don't look stupid is stupid, right? You don't waste your breath on stupid. But when someone has gone beyond stupid, it kind of gets a little bit dangerous because, you know, they, they, they're not, they, they've lost their faculty of thinking. Right? So, when you are addressing or you're sending correspondence to a monarch, when you're sending correspondence to an official, when you're sending correspondence to a government entity or, 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 or a government, a president, a king, a vice president, when you're sending those types of correspondence, there is, right, rules as to how you need to address the person and the way how you also need to sign off, even on how you may address within the content, right? It's official. That's the way it's done. Now, when you meet someone on a meet and greet or you just, I don't know, you went on a visit to shake some hands and to say, you know, we are here to smile and wave. And it compelled you because your assistant said, hey, remember that guy that, um, you know, you said this and this to, maybe we should send him a letter, right? And a letter is typed up for, for you because it's a commoner. You dim what? It's a commoner. So you don't address or you do you don't need to have that formality. Mind you, you could if you wanted, like that's okay, but you do have that extra ability to keep it informal, if that's what you wish to do. 
you are comparing an apple, again, this is the two things I love to say, an apple with an orange. I know they're both fruits, my love. I know they're both fruits, and I know you get confused because you're beyond stupid, right? But look, this is an apple. Do you see? Apple. And this, my love, is an orange. Orange. An orange. Yes, they're fruits. But they're not the same fruit. So you can't compare them as the same thing. Okay? You can compare an apple with an apple or an orange with an orange. All right? And the glee she got out of this. You folks, you folks, you folks like, listen, I think you've spent so much time finding things to just, you know, point fingers or, or, or stir up your hate and all of that, that you have worked yourself into beyond stupidity. Because any any grade two, and I'm insulting people, little I mean, kids in grade two now, so my apologies to you, would understand, right, that these two things are not the same, so we shouldn't be comparing them. You know, I often wonder, when you wake up in the morning, the first thought that comes to your mind is Meghan Markle. That's not a good thing, my love. So that's what you wake up thinking. Why don't you, instead, it's just a suggestion, wake up, give thanks that you're alive, right? That's a good thing. That's called gratitude. Go take a shower or a bath, really important. You know, hygiene's really important, right? Brush your hair or comb your hair, right? Wash your face. There's something called a toothbrush, toothpaste. You know, bum, 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 bum. Do that, right? So your breath can smell good, right? If you have some cologne or perfume or whatever, you add a pum, pum, pum on, Put some deodorant on. Now find something comfortable to wear, if that's what you want, and go outside. Go for a walk. And instead of thinking about Meghan Markle, who doesn't think about you at all, why don't you think about what can I bring today to make the world a better place? Because you see, this six, seven, eight years of hating Meghan Markle, what it's done, it's brought your brain capacity to that of a walnut. I'm not joking. Because you have been digging so long in stupid that now you've passed stupid, right? And once you've passed stupid, Listen, that is, that is dangerous. So instead of Meghan Markle, right, you take a break. Think about what good you can bring for your neighborhood, your neighbor. What can you contribute? Because this, this just shows that you're stupid. And I, I listen, my love. I don't. I don't mean to insult you, right? I'm just. I'm just passionate. So don't take this as an insult. But I. I. I'm. I'm worried. I'm worried that you're able to look at those two things and make a comparison in order to think that you're. You're. You're making fun of a woman who you've never met. You don't know but you hate, who has more education than, than you, and by the way, goes to bed with Prince Harry. No matter what you say, no matter how you play it out, no matter what you do, she still goes to bed with him, honey. Yep, 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 yep. 
So maybe take Prince Harry's face off of your pillow, right? And stop that nonsense. And just try and... This is your life, my love. This is your life. This is what you... Listen, I don't know how old you are, but do you want to be like, I don't know, 80, God willing, you know, 80, 85 or something like that? And you say, nye, 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 and that nigga Michael... Nye, 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 nye. That's not a life. Don't you want to like go out and have a good time, meet some people, make some friends? I mean, real friends. Not, not, not the ones that come here and, and tell you you're great and, and feed your hate, right? That's no good, lovey. No good. No good. Listen, you don't need to listen to me because listen, I'm, I'm, no, I'm no one, right? I'm just talking about something you put here. Maybe you'll, you'll make heads out of tails out of it and realize don't compare an orange with an apple. Okay? All right. That's all I have to say about that. And the hate campaign continues masquerading as journalism. And um, so this, 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 this here is about... Um, what would Meghan Markle be called if stripped of Duchess of Sussex title? What would you be called if you... <laughs> now I'm getting petty. Um, so I, when I saw this, I honestly thought, oh, this is just like from maybe two years ago, three. No, no, no. This, this, is, this is from June 3rd. Like, honestly, June 3rd. So it, it reads, a, a royal expert has said Meghan Markle will be called Princess Henry if she loses the title Duchess of Sussex. According to Ingrid Seward, hey Ingrid, editor-in-chief of Majesty um, magazine, it is not likely that King Charles will take away Prince Harry's and Meghan's royal titles, even though the couple... <laughs> even though the couple stepped down from their duties um, back in 2020. And it is in quotations. I don't think anything will happen to the titles because if they lose their titles, Harry is still a prince of the blood and Meghan, instead of being the Duchess of Sussex, would be Princess Henry, Stuart said, according to the Mirror. Mm, treasure. Um, that really would confuse Americans. Oh, would it? Would it? I, I, I don't know a simple sort of like saying, hey, um, how does that work? And, you know, as long as you're willing to, if someone doesn't understand it because they don't live in your system, they didn't grow up in your system, right? What normal people would do is not throw eggs and say, oh, they wouldn't get it. No, you explain it because it's a system that even a lot of us in the Commonwealth sometimes we go, what? They what? Is a rule about what? You're kidding me. So get off your horses. I mean, it takes two horses to carry you around. No, no, no. I'm not saying you. I'm not trying to insult anyone here. I'm just saying like it would take two horses to carry, you know, a person's ego and their stupidity. And then the person. I'm just saying. Let me continue. That really would confuse the Americans, she said. I think probably best just to leave it because it looks unkind. It looks unnecessary. Sweetheart, you folks are beyond unkind. Unkind left all of you five, six, seven years ago. You all stop being that. A long time ago to this woman so take it campaign for it and then let's see the constitutional like madness that is gonna happen if he does that because I'm gonna buy myself some popcorn and I'm gonna just <laughs> sit back and I'm just gonna go you stupid stupid people all right, let's continue briefly here just to get, because we, do, we would never understand what 
you know she's talking about so let me see if you know this dunce over here might might understand all right so prince harry was born prince henry charles albert david therefore if megan loses her royal title she would technically be known as princess henry as per royal tradition princesses take an official title with their husband's name even in the case of Kate Middleton, she was technically called Princess William when she tied the knot with Prince William back in 2011. However, she is referred to as the Princess of Wales or the Duchess, the Duchess of Cambridge. Uh, likely, da 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 da, will forever be called. Okay, so she says here, um, Stuart pointed out that despite everything, despite what, what? What do you mean by despite everything? It is it it is likely that Harry and Meghan will forever be called the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. The Queen give them the titles. Let them keep them. They're going to be H and M anyways, she said. I think the best thing is to leave leave them, ignore them, and let them get on with it. Which is really what the palace and the royal family are doing. What freaking delusional planet are you living in? Because, let me see. This was written the 3rd of June. I, I, you, you folks are still talking about them? They're still... Uh, well, we found out that actually the king did have a place that he offered... With um, um um Harry to stay, and 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 Harry is the one who refused it. You know, after all that kerfuffle that he caused, um, making that 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 awful statement, blaming his poor father, who's who's that, well well has cancer, and 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 his sister in law who has cancer. I can't believe he, he would write a statement like that. If, you know, Megan probably told him to do that. So, what's the deal? Um, are we going to follow, like, this whole thing about, you know, leave them alone? Because the palace and the royal family are doing so. Since when? Did we not get the memo? Because last time we check, there's a lot of leakage happening in that those 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 like old old palaces and 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 castles and stuff. You know, a lot of leakage. Give me a damn break! I know. So did did you for from from our beautiful wonderful Americans? Did you get that? Because according to this. <laughs> and you folks know who she is, right? <laughs> According to her, Americans wouldn't get it. Oh, gosh. You know, it worries me sometimes. It worries me. Talking about um, that whole kerfuffle about the... Um, um, a, 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 a place was offered for him to stay at, not stay, security, not security... Okay, listen, let's listen, listen to listen to this one. She and people are inevitably asking, where is Catherine? Do you think the palace should be more forthcoming with updates? I actually don't think so. I think there's a time in anyone's life when they need privacy, and obviously when you're very ill with cancer, it's it. Yeah. And this is a woman who st stood on the steps of the Ling Lindo wing just after giving birth, you know, to show us her baby. She's yes, I, I can't imagine being up for that. Can you? No, I would no. never do that in a million years. <laughs> yeah. She's so dutiful, yeah. and you know, and she came out and did this video, as we all know, a couple of months ago, saying she had cancer. I mean, that seemed like enough to me. Um, and the whole point of doing the video was to get us to stop asking where she is. We know where she is. She's, she's just had a lovely half time with her family. She's recovering from cancer. And she may never, ever be out of the spotlight again for the rest of her life because she's going to be famous for the rest of her life. So yeah. let's just give her some space to, to, to rest. It's a fine line, I think, isn't it, between concern and nosiness? Because I think, particularly when it's something as dramatic as cancer, people want mm. to know how she is. Yeah, people want to know exactly how she's getting on with her progress. But 
who knows, maybe she isn't doing that well at the moment or maybe she's only just doing well. I'm just, it's not an area, I think, that, that she probably wants to share minute by minute. Yeah. She probably wants to make a big reveal, actually. She probably wants to be like, I'm back. You know, when, the, when she is feeling tip-top, when she's looking her best, yeah. she might just want to just do the big reveal. Well, we have seen her out and about, haven't we, Richard, uh, with her family, but do you have any... The best part of that conversation was... She wants to do a big reveal, like, I'm back. It's like, I'm Jack. If any one of you <laughs> used to watch Will and Grace, Jack used to be, just Jack. And so, you know, Kate is going to come back and go, just Kate, doing her big reveal. You know, I, I, I absolutely love that, what, what, what was a minute or so in that conversation, because sometimes I think that, you know, there's something wrong with the UK media and especially when it comes to women and the way they kind of hate on women. So it's nice to, to see these women come together and actually say such wonderful things about... Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Oh... Oh, okay, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it, yeah, I got it. So they, 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 oh, yeah, but they, they can't say the same things for Megan, though, right? Because, why, 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 why again? I, I, let me see. Because, so, so, so one, one woman kind of didn't say anything about where she was, whether she had abdominal, not abdominal, what she was doing, but then it got, I know people found out, so they had to say something. Then she she was well. She didn't have any cancer. They actually said she didn't. And then she was seen out with her mom. And then she was seen out with her husband in 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 this 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 car. Um, and then uh, she was seen out very happy, very, very vigorous and, and, and speed walking with her husband. Uh, and, 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 and then there, there was this picture of her with her kids. She looked wonderful and lovely and, and big hugs and stuff. And um, now, all of that is not verifiable or truthful so let's put that under the category of we're not sure we know one thing for sure because you know the international press said so the photo it's a photoshop debacle right william said he took the picture but once that came out that was a debacle his name was never to be found again near that picture. And the, the woman who cannot um, be seen live somehow after abdominal surgery, she did have time to do the photoshopping because she apologized about it, by the way. But funny enough, like she was walking very vigorously in that marketplace. So I don't know, like, how sick really is she? But then she declared that she did. She has cancer, but 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 it's not. It's cancer, but but it's it's preventive cancer. So she's taking preventive chemotherapy. Am, am I getting this right or wrong? I'm, I probably am getting it wrong because it's also confusing. You know what I mean? Uh, it's it's just, I I. Listen, I, I don't get things as well as these royal reporters in the UK do because their level of intelligence and brilliance, it just goes right, right over my head, right? I, I'm, just, I'm, just, just, I'm just a common fool, right? The way I think is so simplistic. So I, I, I know I'm getting this wrong. I know I am. But, but you know, let's continue on this this. This, this path of my ignorance, right? So she was walking vigorously in the market with, with her husband, I think. I mean, unless he had a double also. I mean, I mean I'm not saying that, that was a double. I'm just saying that, that it didn't look like Kate, right? 
So she has cancer. It's not really cancer, but it is. But there's something called preventive chem chemotherapy. So if it's if it's preventive, then that means she's not get has the cancer. She just has something that that that's telling them that she might have the cancer. Okay, all right. So let's just leave that alone. So she can't be seen in public, but she has time to to do the Photoshop and thingy. She also is very, 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 very involved. Remember she said so? She said she will be on her bed and she'll be very involved. She'll be doing her duty still, but 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 from a distance. The world well, yeah, exactly. From a distance, right? So that didn't really pan out. But then this 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 report came out, right? The report about um early childhood, what what kids need, and it was very clear that she was a million times involved in this report. She like did almost all of it, all by herself, right? From her bed. And they took the report to industries in the UK and all of these industries said, oh my gosh, we were waiting for this. We did not even know that there was something that we could do in order to help early development for children, right? So, and listen, not only that, they are going to like save gazillions of pounds and the British economy is going to get an infusion of, again, gazillions of pounds. I know, I know people, gazillion doesn't exist, but listen, okay, I'm a commoner, I'm a simple folk, that's the way I speak. So with all this happening, and not only that, but she also was seen the other day walking around somewhere, somehow, with her family. But no one else saw her, but they are reporting that we did see her. Because that's what that host just said. We saw Catherine. Um, I didn't see her. Did you? Because all of the news magazines and international press that decides to, you know, hang their journalistic reputation on this story, the way they would word the headline, you would think that, oh, so this is a picture of her yesterday walking about with her family. And then you see in the fine prints, this was last year when she visited with William some, I don't know, bed and breakfast placey on something. Or this is a picture from like, I don't know, two years ago. And but 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 we did see her. Am I am I missing something again? Or or, or is my simplistic mind not getting it? Because I don't recall anyone showing a, an actual picture of her. The other thing too that, you know, I've said this here before also, right? I don't take this stuff lightly and I've, I've stayed away from commenting about Kate because I feel very uncomfortable about the whole thing because I don't know, I have, I have my, own, my own thoughts and ideas. And I'll tell you one of them because my one of my friends, I was explaining what's going, you know, what's the, I was giving her an update because I've become like the update person for my group of friends. And um, which, which, which is a good thing because a few of them were quite misinformed, by the way. So what my friend, she said, she goes, what if they have her locked up somewhere? And you know, I never thought of that. Right? Allegedly, 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 I'm not saying it. But just just in conversation, she was like, you know, it wouldn't be like unheard of or impossible to do. She was based on what you're telling me. Let's say she had a nervous breakdown. And she's not completely there yet, right? Because like if you have a mental breakdown, that that stuff sometimes takes a while for one to be okay, right? And they have her locked up somewhere. So she's just in a room and they just kind of 
see how things are going month by month. And as things are not getting better, they're just extending the amount of time. And I was like, wow, okay, you, you are becoming like <laughs> a conspiracy theorist. So that's just what, what, what my wonderful friend um, theorized about. But, but all, all, all the hyperbole and the joking aside, and I know we've said this before. Where was the kindness for Megan? And, and I still ask that question today. Where is the kindness? Where is the consideration for a woman that not only is not of your culture, right? Didn't grow up thinking about the royal family and understand that you know you have to drink tea this way or, or or put the milk before the tea and the hot water before the boiling and the boiling before the listen I know how to make tea so I'm just make I'm just joking okay so get off my back but where was the empathy for her because if there's humanity in any of you one would think that one would need to be more gracious, more forgiving, more thoughtful, more empathetic to, and let's, let's call it what it is, the foreigner, right? That, that, that is now living in your country, trying to understand your traditions, adapt to your traditions, and trying to do her best. but you'd keep knocking her down. Now, if she was the one who was diagnosed, quote unquote, with cancer, you people would be demanding to see her, see her medical reports, see, see, see what kind of chemo, how much is she taking, when is she taking it? And then, then you would say also, maybe it's time for Harry to, to, to leave her. You know, she's, she's just a nuisance or she's like this or that. I am I am I'm flabbergasted at the way these people can just um compartmentalize things. I had a supervisor, well, a senior manager, and I was discussing with this senior manager some 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 challenges I was having, right? And I said to her, you know, I'm finding it a little bit challenging to to this and, and relate to this because these things all have, they're all interconnected. And she said to me, well, they are, but, you know, you need to learn how to compartmentalize. And I said, yeah, but they, they're interconnected. What, I, what decision I make over here with this team and this group will affect the other two teams. And the problem is that right now, the way I'm looking at this, whatever decision I make is not going to be great for the other two. So I'm trying to find a way in which maybe we can amalgamate some of this stuff. So everyone gets to, 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 I don't know, participate in a more successful project rather than two that are going to fail and one that's going to be successful. And it, it was as if I had spoken Martian to her or something. She looked at me and she, she's like, no, you just need to learn how to compartmentalize. Just tell that group what they need to do and then go tell the other two groups what they need to do. I said, yeah, but they're going to fail. She goes, well, they fail, they fail. I, I, and I, I, to this day, I don't understand that. I really don't. Because it's the same way how I don't understand how you can have such empathy for a woman that um, did not do a lot of uh, engagements, um, ha ha has, has asked for privacy and you folks are jumping to, to, give, to give it to her, right? You, 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 you've, you've excused every thing that seems a little bit odd. You've, you've asked no questions. You've just accepted everything. 
but the biracial American, you had none for her. Because I've said this many times. The things that you folks keep pointing out, Oh, she said she said in the interview with Oprah that Archie wasn't going to receive a title. Well, what she doesn't know is that listen, 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 you moron. Listen for a second. When a person is not of a culture, it takes I think about eight years or so. And my memory is failing because I remember reading research about this, that when a person immigrates, migrates, when a person moves to another country, um, it takes about eight years to, to fully um, uh, get grasp of the language uh, like really well and also in, 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 in feeling that you you part you understand traditions now you understand certain things it takes about that that amount of time. So the things that you folks point out with the Oprah interview, what she did, well, she's saying to Oprah what she knows, the information she has. All she knows is that the the, the children of William, they got prince and princess, says titles. So she's going, well, hang on a second. Why, why wouldn't my child get it too? Like, the two of them are brothers. They're both prince. So why would they not want to give it to my child? Now, I don't know if Harry explained it to her or not. Maybe he didn't, the same way how he didn't explain to her about the Kurtzian, because my man was, like, just in love, okay? <laughs> the man was not only just in love, but, but, but there's a lot of things that were coming his way also. And, and to be frank, you folks didn't give her not one thing of grace. You kept counting all the things that she might have gotten wrong because of protocol or because of some tradition from 1524 or, or, or the 14th century or some nonsense. That's your freaking culture. You know it. Now let me see if I pick you up and put you in Tanzania or pick you up, right? And put you in, 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 in Zimbabwe. And see how how you, well you get along, understanding everything within a year or less. You freaking pompous idiots. Now on the same show, this one, and I don't know what happened. I I don't have the sound. The sound bite is not working. But what she basically talked about was about how um, Harry put out that statement to make his dad look bad about, you know, his dad doesn't have time for him. That's your interpretation, by the way. I thought his statement was actually extremely kind and actually beautifully done. And that showed that still he has affection and love for his father, regardless of all the other all this, the stuff that has happened. But of course, you people have to soil everything, right? You have to just, just, just shit over all of it because that is just how you used to. That that is your normal, your your your, your normal your normal way of being. You're just a bunch of swine, a bunch of pigs running around in your own feces. And anything anyone else says, then it has to become the same thing for you. Go clean yourselves. Now, this thing, as I said before. She's talking about uh, how 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 awful that was that Harry did that to his father who has cancer. We'll hear about the cancer until like you know something happens. And she's like, he misled he mis he misled us because we found we found out. And she goes, I know even which which ca which castle or which which palace um, the king was going to offer uh, um, Harry. 
Oh, you know, eh? And no one is leaking anything, right, sweetheart? Um, so she she goes, you know, he 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 says that there isn't um enough security for him. Like basically, who does he think he is? Like the royal family stays at at blah blah blah. And um, if it's good for the royal family, what do you think is not good for him? He prefers to stay at a hotel. A hotel doesn't have proper security. And she goes on and on and basically comes down to this, 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 this essential point. He is paranoid. So they're starting to circulate that word now. He is paranoid. Let me tell you something. And I'm going to call you lady just because, you know, I'm a gentleman. Most of the times I am. Lady. If. Okay. If my mother. If I had lost my mother. At the age of 13. As a young boy. I had to walk behind her casket. When I was out with her. Paparazzi would follow. They would call her names. In front of me. They would call her streetwalker. They would say these. Insidious things to her. To get a reaction. The way. She lost her life. Was these same insidious. Disgusting. Rats. Were following her. And whatever else happened in that tunnel happened, and God knows, and the people who were involved, they know. The rest is just speculation. If I had my phone hacked, so every private, confidential, thing of my life was being listened to, talked about without my knowledge. My brother and my father knew about the phone hacking situation and they made deals. They made deals, but no one told me anything. While my name was being plastered in tabloids and newspapers, while my relationships are being sabotaged, while they're putting tracking devices on people I'm dating, while they're, they, they're in the bar where I'm having a drink and provoking me. And you're calling me paranoid? And that shit has been... Sorry, excuse me, excuse me. No vulgarity, please. That SHIT has been happening to me since I was a kid. And then they started to attack my wife, attack my unborn child. And when he was born, they started to attack him. Then they send their paparazzi to New York and their people in to, to, to what? Intimidate? To send me a message? All of this under the permission, authorization, and okay with my family? And you were telling me I'm paranoid? And I, who was in the military... Now, now, listen, lady. Listen, sit down and shut up for a second, right? You're telling the guy that was in the military... And if you haven't read Spare, read it. He'll tell you some of the things he went through in training and stuff. Pretty intense stuff. Did tours of service for his country. So he defended your freaking ASS, right? So you can sit there and talk your mouth out a bunch of bull. So he went there. Military guy. Let me repeat that. Military guy. 
if he can evaluate a situation with his current security people and they can say that's not safe enough, then who the freak are you to say that he is wrong? Have you been living his life? Do you know the threats against him? Do you know what situation can possibly happen to him? I remember there was a time, I think it happened twice, where intruders got as close to Queen Elizabeth's room. What, was she walking in the hallway and some intruder was right there and she's like, oh, darling, who are you? Are you lost? Who are you? Who are you to tell a military guy that is consulting with his own security and they have come to the decision that if security, extra security is not provided, no matter where Charles is saying, you can have a room here, darling boy. If the conclusion is it's not safe enough if they don't provide the extra security, who are you to say anything? Just sitting there, shut up. Okay, there was, there's more stuff I wanted to talk to you folks about, but gosh, time just flies, like, so quickly. Um, you know, I really want to get to this review, so I'm just going to go to the review and... <laughs> The rift between Prince William and Prince Harry is well and truly still alive. Too many painful things have been said. Prince Harry has confirmed there's a serious rift between him and his brother William. In a controversial move, Princes William and Harry will not stand together when they farewell their grandfather, Prince Philip. The Duke of Sussex was the first to leave Balmoral following his grandmother's death, with some reports that his wife Meghan was told to stay away. It, it wasn't all about Meghan. There doesn't seem a path out of this current situation. They are the broken brothers. The documentary heavily leaned towards a pro-royal family stance, which glossed over any critical issues raised by Harry and Meghan. It painted a picture that essentially blamed them for the breakdown in relations while ignoring the legitimate concerns they've voiced about racism, mental health struggles, and media harassment. So let's let's sort of break break it down in, in regards to the key biases I that I took note of anyways. The documentary was heavily skewed in favor of the royal family, particularly Prince William and Kate. Negative aspects or criticism of the royal family were downplayed or omitted completely, which is clear indication of bias. For instance, it suggested that Harry and Meghan's actions were overly sensitive or self-inflicted without adequately addressing the systemic issues they faced. The issues of racism and mental health struggles that Meghan and Harry faced were briefly mentioned but not explored in depth at all, very surface level. This minimization is harmful because it dismisses their very real and painful experiences. Their desire to work half in, half out, was also not given the serious consideration it deserved, instead portraying their exit as a rash decision. The documentary, so-called documentary, emphasized the importance of adhering to royal duties and traditions, portraying Harry and Meghan's departure as a betrayal. This framing ignores 
the context of why they felt they had to leave to protect their mental health and well-being in the face of relentless media harassment and lack of support from within the institution. And it was not only their health, their own lives. The accounts presented were predominantly from royal correspondents. I'm not kidding. And insiders who have their own biases. They have their own books to sell, their own stories to tell, and keep up the charade or charade. The documentary selectively reported events in a way that favored the traditional royal narrative, ignoring many aspects that might point a more balanced picture. Completely ignored it. The use of emotional scenes like the funeral of Prince Philip and the death of Queen Elizabeth II was intended to evoke sympathy for the royal family, right, and to subdue, um, and 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 to, in a subtle way, criticize Harry and Meghan for their absence, and then blame them also, right. This kind of emotional manipulation distracts from the real issues at hand and unfairly shifts the blame. The documentary serves as a reminder of how narratives can be shaped to favor one side, often at the expense of truth and fairness. It, it's essential to critically evaluate such portrayals and, and, and to seek out full stories, to ask questions when you're watching something to go, hmm, right? It's very important. So would I recommend watching it? No, because I don't want to give them any more clicks or anything like that. But I'll tell you what, what pleasantly surprised me. I'll have to go back and check to see um, what it looks like now, but I watched it the same the same evening it came out, uh, and I, after I watched it, and I, I I looked at my notes, I was just like, come on, because there are parts of of it that that. I was like, okay, there is some hope here. You're going to talk now about this, right? Because you just talked about this side. You you're going to you're going to give the balance. You're going to say, ah, nah, no, you didn't. Okay. And that kept happening all the time. So I kept thinking, I don't want to look at the comments. I don't want to read them or anything because it's just going to be one of those things again. And the insults and the this and the that and who's a this and who's a that and who said who astray and all that freaking, I don't know, whatever. And I was I, I was not in the mood for it. And... <laughs> But you know, curiosity killed the cat, and I looked first, second, third comment, and like the fourth, and I'm like, O M M M G. It was, there were quite a few before I, you know, I got to the ones that weren't that great. It was all like, I'm Team Harry. And not only that, people pointed out the things that they ignored. People were calling them out and saying, by the way, nice how you just showed, you know, one side of that story. And I'll tell you, I, I got this big smile on my face that I couldn't, I, 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 it, it was like just pure joy. It's amazing to me how we as as people, you know, and sometimes I I, I not that I'm, I try to relate or anything, but I try to under try to I try to try to understand 
a person who's in the mindset that all the information that they have gotten is about how awful, mean, narcissistic, the blah, 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 that the Sussexes are. And all these awful things about Megan. Because they don't stop mentioning Megan and, and every, everything has Megan on it. Everything. She walked with heels. I don't know, she's the devil. She had flats on. Oh, she's the devil. Oh, she, she, oh. And the tropes are so obvious, so obvious and blatant. But anyways, getting back to my point, sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to exercise my executive producer creator hat and just uh, intervene and cut it here because I go on and on and on talking about or trying to understand the uh, mindset of the Rangers and that is, that's not what any one of you want to hear or what I should be spending my time trying to psychoanalyze these people. But I'll, I will say that I did um, go back to the um, to the documentary to see the commentary and it has, it has changed, my friends. The Rangers have gotten hold of it. So there, there's quite a lot more of the, the, the negativity and I, I I must say though, you know, the way they see things, the way they excuse everything from their point of view, it it implies the negation of everything else. Like someone mentioned about, oh, I'm sick and tired of hearing about her side, about her father. Has anyone listened to his side? The poor man. So you believe him, but you don't believe her. Even though there is all this proof about the things that he has done. In cahoot with his other two children, who are older than Megan, and have been trolling her, harassing her, nonstop. And him as a father has done nothing. So you believe them, but you don't believe her. And the whole thing also about how Megan is a narcissist because she, she's an abuser, because she isolated Harry. Even his friends from Eden don't speak to him anymore. Have you read Spare, you moron? Have you picked up a book and read it from his words, his mouth? So, I am happy I, I, I cut the, <laughs> this thing because the whole thing was me trying to, not justify, but to understand their mindset. But it's not understanding their mindset. It's really simple. Is you're racist. Period. Let's start there. You're misogynistic, whether you're a man or a woman, whatever gender you want to identify with. Right? You have this, 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 this ethnocentricity where you think that um, your culture is greater and better, this imperial, colonial attitude. Because in order to carry on with the things that you believe in, you have to negate all the other proof, all the other evidence that contradicts your belief. And life is not one-sided. I would, I would dare to say that most of us we have listened to both things. We have, we, have, we have watched, we have listened, we have read. And because many of us can identify with what Megan has gone through, because we know it. We've lived it. Now, I'm not going to make an assumption and say most of you are Caucasian, but for many of you that 
that speak and call her a liar and this and that. She doesn't know, like the Pierce Morgans of the world, because he's an expert in mental health. He's an expert at people lying. He's an expert in all these things. He's an expert in being a jackass. Pardon my French again. So, if you folks want to go to to there and leave my messages, go right ahead. <laughs> um, I really don't want you guys to watch it though, because it's going to give them more clicks, it's going to give them more view, viewership, and it just, it just annoys me. But trust me when I say it is completely one-sided. Completely one-sided. It, it's, it's, it's in the defense of, of um, William. They paint him as this poor, sad, um, left alone, and everything has fallen on his shoulders, same as um, Kate. How can they handle everything all by themselves? They, 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 they are, are already such hard workers. Everything that we know that is not true, everything that we know that, that, we, that we have, like, there's receipts. Like, like, you can literally look at the calendar and see how many days these people have worked and what they've done, well, whatever the definition of work for them is. On a different note, as, as we wrap up here, who's watching Bridgerton? Because there was a scene in Bridgerton, this is season three here I'm talking about, where, um, is his name Mangrove? Gosh, I don't remember now. So... The, 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 the guy who owns um, the gentleman club or the bar or whatever, right? And um, another gentleman, another fellow comes to him and he goes, if you're going to be part of the town, if you're going to be a gentleman, like, you know, one of the aristocracy, you cannot be seen working. Because the aristocrats, men of the town, don't work. Right? You, you're not, you're not, you're not cleaning glasses. You're not fetching things. So they, 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 they're like, you need to stop. I'm interested to see how that story is going to develop because he doesn't want to stop. I understand his point of view. But at the same time, I'm going, what are you doing, dude? Like, you've got an opportunity here. Now, there's things you may not agree with. But work with it from the inside and change it or, you know, because he's already losing business. Listen to me now talking about <laughs> Bridgerton. But um, yeah, tell, just just leave, leave me comments on what you thought about today's episode. Anything that um, spiked your interest or anything that um, you thought was interesting, leave, leave me a note. Leave me a note also about Bridgerton. If you're watching it, um, what do you think? Um, this season, well, half of, half of the season now, I, I, I'm not going to say what, what I think yet, but I was listening to someone else do a critique on, on this season. And I thought he had some really valid points. Um, and it's, it's, it's too bad because I really, 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 um, Maybe in the second part, it'll, it'll get a little bit more like, you know, the usual Bridgerton. <laughs> Anyways, folks, um, this is it for today. Thank you so very much. Um, I hope you, you, as I said, enjoyed today's podcast. You got something out, out of it. And again, if you are here and you haven't realized yet, this, this podcast is in support. Um of harry and megan so if you're going to leave a rude comment or something insulting or you think i need to know something that is going to eliminate me in changing the way i think or believes that i've got based on facts and reality please don't and calling me names also doesn't work listen i i've had i've had a life where there isn't a name you can call me that has not already been called. I'll tell you something. I am a child of God. And you can call me anything you want. 
it means nothing to me because your words mean nothing to me. My mother's words, my father's word, and God. That's it. The rest, if you come into me with negativity and you come into me with, no, 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 amore, my love, no, 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 no. No? Shh, don't speak, don't, shh, don't speak. It's a waste of your energy. It's a waste of everything. It's a waste of, 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 of the faculties God has given you. So, spare me, spare you, spare me, spare you. I know that's not a song, but I don't know. All right. Muchas gracias. Espero que lo disfrutaron. Big hugs, kisses, and all good things. I say adieu for tonight and until we speak again, my friends. Bye bye. Love you all. So the enemies, I'm taking them apart. I'm a young boss, got me feeling like a rock. They can never match it, they can never stop. Cause I've been really giving everything that I got. Cause I've been working on a plan, not a block. Over what the killers, and we coming to the top. We're blowing up, we're sitting in your mic, get dropped. Cause we're never quitting, we are never giving up. So the enemies, I'm taking them apart. I'm a young boss, got me feeling like a rock. They can never match it, they can never stop. Cause I've been really giving everything that I got. Cause I've been working on a plan, not a block. Over what the killers, and we coming to the top. We're blowing up, we're sitting in your mic, get dropped. Cause we are never quitting, we are never giving up. So the enemies, I'm taking them apart. I'm a young boss, got me feeling like a rock. They can never match it, they can never stop. Cause I've been really giving everything that I got. Cause I've been working on a plan, not a block. With the killers and we coming to the top We blowing up, we sitting in your mic, get yeah, drop Yeah I'm the hunter, you're the prey You a bet that I never run away Cause I'm the one that fights through the pain I'm the new leader, it's time for a change What you know about living in the rain Living in the cold, hating every day But then you still want to do it anyway But that's not you, yeah, we are the same I put the work in, you complain I'm a rebel, I'm the main I'm the alpha in this game and that ain't never gonna change Never gonna change, never gonna switch If I'm in this game, y'all mean this bitch Stick another pay, yeah, we getting rich Investing all the money in the bigger things Here we going heavy, yeah, we killing it It's never stone down, do we feeling it? They can't hold us down, cause we never quit We the rebel to the town, now we get the shit So the enemies, I'm taking them apart I'm a young boss, got me feeling like a rock They can never match it, they can never stop Cause I've been really giving everything that I got Taking another plan, another block what the killers are we coming to the top? We're blowing up, we sit in your mic, get dropped. Yeah, I'm the hunter, you're the prey. You're a breath that I never run away. I'm the new leader, it's time for a change. Hitting every day. I'm the new leader, it's time for a change.